So what we have here today is the world's fastest MDME SSD on the market, the Crucial T705. And yes, you have heard that right, the world's fastest SSD on the market. And this is claiming to have read speeds up to 14,100 megabytes per second. And to put that into perspective, that's 14 gigabytes in a split second. Like imagine, bang, 14 gigabytes. Bang, another 14 gigabytes. Now the Crucial T705 does come in a few different capacities and each one has their respective speeds. So there's a one terabyte version that has read speeds up to 13,600 megabytes and up to 10,200 in read. Then we have the two terabyte version, which has up to 14,500 megabytes per second reads and 12,500 megabytes per second writes. And then we have the four terabyte option, which surprisingly has a slightly lower read speed of 14,100 megabytes per second and 12,600 for the writes. Now typically when you go larger in capacity, it also kind of affects the read and write speeds. Typically it improves it the larger you go. This over here is the four terabyte option, which is their most flagship or the highest capacity version that they offer. This is also a PCIe Gen 5, which is only compatible with the most recent and the latest motherboards out there, which I gotta admit, there's not really many options out there. and. The few motherboards out there that do support Gen 5 are quite pricey. But taking a look at the actual product box itself, it has a couple of cool features. It has a limited five-year warranty and Adobe Creative Plan membership for one month included. And even the slogan on here is pretty cool. It says, ultimate speed for gaming and content creation. Inside of the box, it's pretty straightforward and simple. All you get is just the SSD itself and a plastic enclosure. Now, Crucial does offer to include a heatsink if you were to opt for that bundle. But personally, I just opted for just the chip alone so I can use a custom heatsink of my own. Most of the M.2 SSD heatsinks are just passive, meaning it's just a piece of thermal pad and a piece of metal on top as a heatsink to absorb heat. It's not necessarily the most effective way to cool off components, but it'll do the job. Uh, if you want the best performance in terms of cooling, you want to get something that's active, something that has like a fan on it. Now the SSD is absolutely tiny, as you would expect with an M.2 SSD. You know, they pretty much all look the same. And it's pretty crazy how they're able to have such performance in just a tiny little chip. You know, if you've been in the PC world for some time, uh, you would know how big hard drives were. That was kind of my era. And then we moved on to SATA SSDs and then the NVMe M.2s. I'm not old enough to experience the whole floppy disk thing. You know, I never really seen what that looks like or how it works, but yeah, we come a long way with hard drive or SSD technology over the years. Now, like I mentioned earlier, with it being a PCI Gen 5, uh, it's pretty difficult to find motherboards that are compatible with it, let alone just a cost. And if you are someone who's interested in upgrading or building a new PC that has you know, great SSD performance without having to spend a lot for a Gen 5, you can still get away with it with the Gen 4s. My go-to is the Western Digital Black uh, SN850X. This I've been using this for a few years now in a couple of PC builds and I still currently use it in an external PCI 4 enclosure uh, for editing on my MacBook. And this thing is rated up to 7,300 megabytes per second. So about half of the crucial, but it's still a significantly quicker than most of the options on the market for a Gen 4. And if you want something a little bit more budget friendly that doesn't need to have the craziest of speeds while also offering pretty decent performance is the Samsung 960 Evo. So this is a very basic straight to the get go, you know, NVMe SSD that can get the job done. But if you are absolutely anal about performance and you want something like the Crucial T05, but you don't want to spend the price for it, or you don't want to have to change out your whole motherboard, there is something called a RAID or a RAID 0, which essentially is a way to combine multiple drives into one via software. And that will increase your overall read and write speeds. Also just combine everything into one drive capacity wise. So for example, let's say you have two individual drives, let's say they're one terabyte each, uh, and they're rated for, let's say, 7,000 megabytes per second. If you were to create a RAID 0, combining those two drives together, the system will actually read it as a single two terabyte drive, and the actual performance will be double. So if it was 7,000 megabytes per second for each individual drive, it would add up to about 14,000 megabytes per second. And that's pretty much the speed of the Crucial T705. You know, and you don't have to get this version. You can always get like a Gen 4 chip, and then kind of combine it yourself. It's just a little bit more tedious, a little bit more work, 
And you know, raids always come with their own little caveats. There's some risk with it where if one of the drive fails, the whole system will crap out. But as long as you're not messing with it too much, it's pretty reliable and it's an affordable way to increase your performance and get the best bang for your buck. We see big manufacturers actually do this all the time. For example, Apple with all their recent Mac lineups. A lot of the SSDs used in their computers, like their MacBooks and their Mac minis and whatnot, actually have some sort of similar RAID setup where they're using multiple SSD chips and programming them to act as one. And that's how they're able to achieve the performance that they deliver. But without further ado, today we're focusing on the Crucial T705 to see if it's really any good as a standalone chip. We're gonna be installing this into a motherboard and running an operating system on there. And we're gonna be doing a series of tests from you know startup times and read and write speed tests and also some real life benchmarks from video editing, gaming, just navigating around, multitasking. And the motherboard we're gonna be using for this build is the Asus uh, Z790. This is actually one of the very few motherboards out there that can support a Gen 5 SSD. Um, and even just looking at the price tag on here, this thing is already $469 before tax. But in this video specifically, we're gonna be strictly focusing on the SSD's performance and seeing how everything goes. So let's get into the benchmarks and see how good this SSD really is. So now we are officially up and running on the PC. I have just built my little mini ITX build. If you guys wanna check out the whole entire PC build, make sure to go click the link in the description below featuring this super fast SSD. So the first thing we're gonna be testing out is the disk speed test from Blackmagic Design. This is the writes on the left and reads on the right. Uh, we're gonna select our main drive, select target drive as our OS drive. I'm just gonna set it to the desktop, doesn't really matter. Um, I do have a couple of different drives in here and I do have a SN850X in here as well as a separate uh, PCI4 external. So here we go, let's run this and see what we get. Okay, so the first run we have write speeds of around 9.6, read about 4,000, my gosh, that's a little low I gotta say, uh, but it could be that you know, we're running it as an OS drive. Our write speeds tend to be a little faster than the reads, surprisingly. Um, it's kind of settling around the 9,000. That's kind of like the limit that we're seeing consistently. Uh, let's actually jump down and see a one gigabyte stress test if it changes anything. Okay, so it definitely goes a little higher. Uh, let's see, reads. Yeah, so we're seeing some inconsistencies here with the read speeds uh, overall in general. Um, you know, they're advertising around 14,000. You know, I think that's a little bit steep. So let's just select the SN850X, the Western Digital one. This is the, so to speak, flagship PCI Gen 4 SSD available. So it is significantly slower than the Crucial T705. But uh, I believe the advertised speeds of the Western Digital drive is around 7,000. So we're seeing consistent numbers here of around you know, 24, 2500. Okay, so now we're gonna just navigate around the system, kind of click around and see how snappy it is. Uh, we're just gonna open up this folder, open up this, you know, folder as well. We have some H.265 footage here, uh, shot in 4K. So we're gonna just launch that up. I'll use VLC, why not? And it just launches right up, super, super quickly, as you can see. And I can just kind of click through, no lag, no delay. So we're gonna click on Photoshop, Lightroom, and Premiere Pro. We're gonna click all three of these. And it seems to have launched up pretty quickly, as you can see. We have Photoshop right over here. There we go. We have, uh, oh, Premiere just launched. So we got Lightroom, everything is, you know, all laid out in here. So let's focus on Premiere real quick. We're gonna open a project, just, you know, to test it out. So this is a 4K timeline uh, using that C-Log3 footage from the Canon R5. And as you can see, I can just scroll through. This is also color graded as well. So look at that, super smooth playback. We're gonna do an export and we're gonna run this in H.265 right over here at the maximum depth, maximum render quality. And we're gonna do a target bit rate of 40. And let's just name this test. And we're gonna send it to Media Encoder. So now we can see how quickly it's able to handle renders and uh, you know, just processing everything. And we're gonna just click on start and see how quickly it's able to process this. And look at that. Wow, wow, wow. This is a one minute clip, uh, HEVC, which is H.265. Um, now yet again, this is a test of, you know, 
multiple components. It's not just the SSD, but it definitely does play a role in terms of just the processing speed. So 4K timeline, C log footage, uh, and it's a one minute clip that is taking about, let's see what it closes at, 29 seconds. 29 seconds. That is pretty crazy. So now let's do a quick gaming test. I'm gonna be launching a Black Ops 2 multiplayer. This is one of my absolute favorites. It's a classic. Now the fast drive should actually improve the overall performance of the game in terms of loading speeds, uh, just game loads, you know, if you're entering a lobby, uh, even just the overall FPS, it can actually increase the frames that you're able to achieve based on the faster texture loading and whatnot. So here we go, we're gonna click on play. This is from Steam. So let's see a real time sort of launching speed. Look at that. Just a couple seconds and we are already on the loading screen. We're gonna go on online. But yeah, as you can see, everything is extremely, extremely quick. And just to, you know, give you some idea of what we're running here, uh, this is a 4K resolution. So here we are entering the lobby. Bang, look at that. It took literally seconds. And the graphic settings that we're running are pretty much maxed out. Look at that, buttery smooth. Buttery smooth performance. Oh, I missed that one. There we go. So as you can see, overall, the whole computer is just super fluid and super fast. And you know, when it comes to gaming, there's a lot of factors to it. You know, it depends on your GPU, how many frames you're able to achieve with that. Your processor also plays a role. So there's a lot of factors when it comes to gaming, but in terms of just overall loading times, the SSD should really speed things up. So hopefully this video can give you guys a real world test and an idea of how well this Crucial TL5 performs. Overall, I'm really pleased with the performance of this drive. And so if you guys are interested in picking one up for yourself, I will leave a link in the description. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like and a comment below. If you're new to this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as turning on the post notifications to see when I upload. With that being said, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.